This is Twit. When I'm reaching for Bedrock DB, what problem am I solving? Well, I think the uh, the problem is you want a simple database that can be uh, scale and replicate across data centers. I would say those are the two main things. And that the cross data center one is the most important one. I think the idea of a WAN replicated database is sort of a, a rare thing. And I think that's where a lot of the sort of off the shelf options, especially MySQL kind of breaks down. Uh, when we started off, um, MySQL didn't have any sort of notion of distributed transactions, which is crazy, but um, yep. they came kind of late. And furthermore, they're not really optimized to work in a uh, uh, sort of across the internet connection. They're very much in, uh, designed to work across a very fast sort of like gigabit network, not a very slow sort of like megabit internet connection. And so the reliability and latency and speed of a WAN connection is just a completely different ball game when you're dealing with dis distributed transactions. But I think in a modern day, if your application is limited to a single data center, like you're just planning to fail. Like it doesn't matter how good your data center is, it's going to go down. And so I think that if you're not running your application in a distributed manner across, I personally think the magic number is three data centers. I think you're just not building a modern modern application. So tell us more about the technology here. So I, I got that sure. right. It's SQLite and, and as the core. And then and what yeah. do you have around that to make this all work? Sure. And so the... The major thing that always blows people's minds is SQLite. They're like, what? How could this possibly work? It works on my phone. It works on my browser. How could it work on a server? And even SQLite guys, they were skeptical at the start. <laughs> but the database is amazing, like absolutely amazing. The performance is unbelievable because, I mean, if you think about it, SQLite was built in a modern environment, whereas a lot of the current databases were built in a really antiquated world where there's spinning disks, there's highly constrained RAM, there's a whole bunch of like really tight constraints which just don't exist today, but they've got the baggage sort of built based upon those assumptions. Whereas SQLite's built for a real simple file system with plenty of RAM, and it describes kind of what a modern server environment is, but everyone sort of forgot about that. And SQLite is so fast because it doesn't have any sort of networking component when you query it, you're querying directly into RAM. Like your APIs can get immediately access to RAM. And so there's no process overhead. There's no kernel switching. There's none of this junk that comes along with uh, sort of MySQL and the databases. It's so fast and it's so scalable. I mean, in every way, I just don't know why people wouldn't use SQLite more. It has every feature you could possibly want. It has so many features that you'll never even use. And I think that it's just an incredibly powerful thing. Plus, you mentioned Richard Hip. The Escalate team is just amazing. Like these are some of the best engineers in the world, and it's a small enough organization that you can talk to them and get answers and and understand what's going on. So I, I just can't rave enough about SQLite. And so I was a fan of the database before, and when I had my problem, where I'm like, hey, I want to build a modern application uh, distributed across different data centers, I'm looking to the options out there, and they're pretty bad. I mean. They're not great now, but at the time, uh, <laughs> like uh, Percona was just starting. Um, MySQL didn't have anything like this. Oracle is just a disaster. And so I wanted <laughs> something that I could make work. And my background is in peer-to-peer -peer programming, things like this. I'm like, well, SQLite's amazing. Um, and a distributed transaction layer isn't that hard, I guess. I could probably write that. Uh, and so I just started with a C++ sort of Paxos-style distributed transaction layer on top of SQLite and kind of went from there. And now, what, about 10 years later, now we have an incredibly hardened system that processes, you know, billions of transactions and uh, very large databases, and uh, it's powering essentially all of the Expensify website and mobile service, basically on SQLite, and it blows people's minds. But it is amazing. So you just mentioned ten years. I thought this was a fairly recent project. Has this been around for a long time then? Oh, uh, I started working on it in probably two thousand eight. Uh, I think it's more like okay. nine years. Um, yeah. Actually, it's two thousand seven. So ten. Yeah, let's call it ten. Um, and so it's been around for a while, I would say. it's We've gradually worked through order of magnitude after order of magnitude, scaling up Expensify. And it's it's the core technology that powers everything that we do. And it's, I would say, yeah. a big part of the secret sauce of Expensify. Cool. But now it's open source. And that, that's fairly recent, right? Yes. Okay. We've open sourced it pretty recently, but it's been stable and in production for a very long time. And so what's the te what does the architecture actually look like? So you've got an SQLite... Yep. Uh, library that you're using and you've got some sort of wrapper around it and then that provides probably a client side sock socket facing yep. stuff right and then probably there's some peer to peer connections going on as well how how does it all play together how does it all work together sure and so there's the SQLite at the very bottom um, and then on top of that is our clustering layer so the clustering layer works as follows and that is 
um, when it starts up, each node, and they're all um, uh, equal, but they have a priority. And so they'll basically go into a, a searching state, try to just contact as many of their peers as they possibly can. Each one basically knows how far along in the database it's replicated. Essentially, it maintains a journal, which is a, a sort of a consolidated SQLite or it's a, a SHA hash of basically all past queries that have been committed to that database. And so every database mm. commits in the same order, uh, though it does have multi-write multi, uh, uh, capability, which people don't realize that SQLite is a very concurrent database, but you know, but we use all that capability. So that everyone starts up, sees who they can connect to, um, uh, figures out who has the most data, they share it all amongst themselves, uh, and then they basically elect a master. And this is where sort of the Paxos consensus algorithm comes from. And master election is very tricky art in a distributed environment where everything can go wrong and everything does go wrong. Um, once they agree on a master, then basically um, the master will uh, uh, announce itself, everyone will approve that, and then everyone will start sort of slaving to that master. And so everyone will, basically every node has a complete copy of the entire database. Um, and thus every node to the client layer looks equally capable. Um, you don't have to be aware of which one the master is and that information is generally sort of hidden from you anyway. You send it from the client perspective where it's PHP or using MySQL client or something like this. Uh, you will connect to the uh, any of the nodes. All of the read commands will be executed locally in a, a as many it, by default, it uses as many threads as there are cores represented in the system, but you can configure that. Um, and okay. then any writes are escalated to the master. Uh, the master uh, will uses a variety of techniques to figure out essentially uh, if it needs to replicate that, if it needs to wait for a consensus, or if it's just going to um, uh, commit it or what. Uh, it will do the process, or it'll initiate the transaction. If we assume it's a distributed transaction. Um, it will basically wait for a quorum of all the slaves to respond, and then it will respond the answer back to the initial one that escalated it and send it back to the client. Now, there are a ton of details in there. And I think the uh, what one of the strengths of, um, of Bedrock is that it's not built in an academic environment. It's not sort of a, a solution in seek of a problem. Everything it does was built in response to real-world problems. And, um, and so as a result, it has a tremendous amount of resiliency against all sorts of weird failure conditions, you know, and in uh, real problems that have happened. 